Well, thank you very much uh, for that. That's correct, uh, Mr. V. Vedanathan is right here to answer all the questions that shareholders and viewers are wanting to, uh, you know, ask him regarding this quarterly number. Uh, Mr. Vedanathan, thank you very much for your time. Uh, you know, it's kind of repeating. The quarterly numbers are uh, shareholders are getting a view that this is the third or fourth time in a quarter that the profitability has been hit due to provisions. This time, it's about the telecom company Vodafone that you provided for almost 50% of the exposure there. How did you arrive upon that 50% number uh, in particular, and how bad is the situation on some of your stressed accounts? Uh, you know, this was uh, that sort of a decision which was on the edge, actually. Uh, on one hand, the cash flow of the company are strained uh, for making fresh investments for growing the telecom company. Uh, number two, the, you know, uh, the, the promoters themselves are talking about the fact that uh, they might shut down if, they, if they're forced to pay the AGR dues. So how can a responsible company really ignore uh, such a material information in terms of market news going around? So we actually felt that uh, it is important to recognize the stress in the sector and more particularly re recognize the stress in this particular company on our books. We just want to have a clean book and going forward. At the same time, uh, it is also true that uh, the government uh, does not want uh, uh, this company to close down. Uh, it is also true that uh, India needs a vibrant uh, uh, telecom sector and it also has a significant ownership of both Vodafone and the Billa Group. So if you think of it, it's a very even decision. So in a cloudy environment, we decided best to go 50% and, and take it as it comes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vedanathan, you know, the shareholder actually want to understand from you that where are we right now as far as the provisioning cycle is concerned. Till last quarter to on operating level, you had actually broken even 100 crore PBT. But if every quarter provisions like these keep coming up, then your profitability can remain clouded for, net profit can remain clouded for a few more quarters. So can you give some color, how long can it last and where are we on the provisioning cycle right now? No, first of all, thank you for asking this question. A lot of people are asking this question, how long, right? You've got three, four quarters of taking provisions for uh, so-called legacy wholesale loans. So I, I acknowledge that issue. Uh, I must uh, say that we put this in three buckets and I must uh, share this for the benefit of the viewers. Uh, we had exposure to Devan Housing, I'll tell you names. Uh, we had exposure to Devan Housing and Reliance Capital to the extent of 1,500 crores. We have taken a 75% provision against these. We believe that's safe, we don't expect to take any further hits. We also had exposure to, uh, uh, to a company called Sikal, which is South India, un got stuck in unfortunate circumstances, 100 crores. We recognized it, we've taken 50% provision for that. Thirdly, we have exposure to one infrastructure company, which is a toll road operating company. That exposure is 963 crores. That's paying us, but SMA too, it's delayed and continuously delayed. We did not want to not recognize it, rather we wanted to recognize it, so we've taken a 15% provision for that. Now, these three have been disclosed. Now, additionally, there are infrastructure loans of 1,191 crores, which are in various stages of of, of, uh, uh, of delinquency, if at all, many of them are current. We have taken a 53% provision, provision for that. All in all, put together, if you sum this up, mm -hmm. the total stressed book, as we call it, the Devan, the Lance Capitalics are all put together, is 3,487 crores. We have taken a 51% provision for that. We think this provision is appropriate for this book. More specifically, if you're asking me next quarter, the quarter after that, are we planning to take any more provisions to the account? The answer is, as far as we can see now, the answer is no. So chances, probability of incremental provisioning on the stress book which you have? On this stress book, because you already have 51%, it's unlikely that we will take it. A little bit, you know, we're running a large, you know, 50,000 crore book, you know, 100, 200 crores per quarter of provisions is, is normal, that can come. But no big ticket item like a, uh, you know, like a Divan of 600 crores, or Reliance Capital of 900 crores, or a Vodafone of 3,200 crores, we don't have any more of those big items to bother about. I was looking at uh, your watch list also, which you have shared in the presentation. Uh, there are a couple of accounts there, anywhere between 300, 400 to 900 on the higher side, which you spoke, of, spoke about. From your infrastructure book, are there any accounts which are at risk? That's what I pointed out to you. So when you add up all these numbers, uh, this uh, 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 3,500 crores of uh, infrastructure plus all this put together, uh, and more specifically, infrastructure book we talked about is the 1,100 crore book. We have 51% provision. We think it's safe. The issue, the way we deal about this is that if we have an issue, I want to look at the issue fairly and squarely in the face, and I want to deal with it. 
because if I don't deal with it, there will always be confusion in the marketplace. For example, on Vodafone, people did, just did not know what our exposure was. There was speculation. And I don't want our investors to be speculating. I just want to tell them the truth. Mr. Vayadhan, uh, I just want to ask you, you know, at uh, the NBFC uh, entity earlier, the profitability of the group was very healthy. And it was, in fact, uh, the CAGR was very high double-digit CAGR. You mean uh, Capital First? Yes, at Capital First. Yes, 55%, yes. So, uh, you know, when you merge this entity into the bank, uh, do you sometimes, or some of your large shareholders, question you on the decision which you made? Because it has completely eroded the profitability prospects, at least as we stand today. If you uh, look at the last couple of quarters, and the outlook has dimmed quite a lot on profitability. So, do they question you? Do you look at your decision? See, that decision has passed. You know, it's been a year and a half now. Uh, but, uh, you know, I should not be uh, selective in picking the good spots of what we go, uh, got from IDFC Bank as a merger and only, you know, regret uh, the issues. It comes as a package. And, and, and uh, it's true that we had these four legacy accounts which we had to take through the provisions account. I believe once we are done with it, we'll be done. We can look ahead. In fact, this quarter, I actually think of it as a quarter after which I can look ahead. Now, Therefore, when we see these issues, I cannot not respect the fact that there's a banking license. A lot of plumbing work had already been done. Technology had been built. It was right for me to scale it up. I have to appreciate that also. It would be unfair for me to just pick on the bad loans and not appreciate the, uh, the good things that came with the merger. And the what came was good, was really good. Mr. Vainathan, uh, you know, you're also transforming the overall complexion of the loan book. And we have seen it happen. Uh, the proportion of loan book on the retail side is going up whereas you're dialing down the proportion of wholesale lending book. Uh, how is the rate of growth happening in both the sides? And how is this transformation taking shape? You know, something dramatic is happening underneath, which the normal eyes can't see. Most people are seeing the loan book is flat. At one, you know, we started the merger at 1,6,000 crore. The loan book is still 1,6,000 crore. But the four quarters. Is. Four quarters. So you may look at it and say, my God, there's nothing happening here. But that's not true. If you see the retail book, was at merger was 36,000 crores. Today it's 52,000 crores. Every quarter we're growing by 4,000 crores. At the same time, the wholesale book is coming down by 4,000 crores a quarter. I think it's a very fine strategy that goes behind it. And the benefit is showing immediately. What has happened to NIMS? Pre-merger, our NIM was 1.56%. Today the NIM is like close to 3.8%. So uh, uh, the uh, uh, so basically uh, the the benefit of uh, this change is beginning to show very well. So how about how about your capital adequacy right now? Because you are earning better in terms of margins now, almost trebled. But at the same time, there are some costs also at play uh, as far as your uh, you know these uh, provisions are concerned. So what's the capital adequacy right now? The capital adequacy, uh, even after this quarter and last few quarters of uh, losses we posted for those specific accounts, uh, is still 13.3% uh, or 13.28% to be precise. Uh, on CET1, not just tier 1, common equity, shareholder money that is uh, uh, tier 1, CET1 what we call, is 13.3%, uh, uh, which is much higher than uh, regulated requirements of 7% uh, and you know otherwise 9% including tier 2. Uh, it's quite strong. Uh, this can hold us for growth for quite a while. And by the way, uh, we are also in a position to raise uh, capital because uh, the people are underlying the, uh, under understanding the underlying strategy and underlying book we're building. Uh, so if you want to raise capital, I'm sure there is uh, just a lot of capital available. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, among some of your peers, there have been big raises in the last one year in terms of uh, lenders in general, not a bank. Oh, yes. You know, basically the Indian private bank story is so fantastic. We have fantastic skills. Our core model is good. Our NIM is growing. CASA is growing. Uh, the margins are growing. Uh, PPOP, pre-provisioning operating profit, is growing to 600 crores. So there are many strong things. So if you want to raise capital, I can assure you uh, there is enough money chasing. But have you? is there something on the drawing board? Have you considered any, any ballpark requirement? Uh, at this point of time, we always look at all options. Uh, but at 13.3, at CET1, there is no real, like, there's no tomorrow's need. Right. Uh, we also have headroom to raise tier 2 money. And between tier 1 and tier 2, uh, we can always take it up to 18% even today. Mr. Vedanathan, uh, talk to us about what kind of distribution architecture you are setting up right now. Because after all, uh, the kind of aims you have set for yourself, even financial parameters you have guided for, will require the 
the boost coming in from distribution architecture? Uh, undoubtedly, uh, we are setting up a branch uh, architecture. Uh, I, I guided it right at the time of merger uh, that between 600 to 800 branches is a table stakes for being in this business, uh, apart from the fact that digitization is growing and all that. Uh, uh, so right now, uh, we have crossed uh, 400 branches and uh, we are well on our way there. So, you know, the earnings season is three-fourth al almost over and the commentary coming in some of your, from some of your peers, be it large NBFCs, uh, be it some of the large private sector banks, seem to be suggesting that they are, the community is getting slightly cautious about the retail end of the book as well, which is very healthy. The growth is healthy and the margins there are healthy and your numbers also demonstrate that. But uh, do you think reason to be a bit cautious on that and uh, what's your own, uh, at your vantage point, how are your observation? Because your asset quality in the retail end is pretty stable. See, asset quality retail is very stable. Uh, it was 2.3%, uh, it's been 2.3 percentage odd for now four quarters in a row gross and net is about 1.1% uh, stable. Mm -hmm. Four quarters after a bank and pre-bank it's got a nine year track record. And for nine years to have a gross NP of 2% and net NP of 1% tells us something that's underlying is very strong. Now, there is one important thing that people should note. What gives us the confidence to scale it up? Mm -hmm. Very simple. But in 2000, this loan book started 94 crores in 2010, just 94 crores. But in 2010 to 14, there was enough economic issue, a book was good. 2016 was a demonetization, big event, book stayed good. 2017 of GST, book stayed good. Last four month, quarters, slow down, book is good. So I am very confident of what we're building. Genuinely, investors need to have no worry on that front. Right. So uh, because there is a lot of actual you know, j issues in terms of jobs and uh, on the ground, especially small businesses we speak to are reporting some kind of a contraction. When you go and meet your uh, you know, network across the country, and we know about you do, you're doing a lot of dipstick. Uh, you were talking to a taxi driver on the maths, uh, which that guy takes care of as far as the loan is concerned. What is the sense you're getting on ground? See, the, uh, from our vantage point of view, one big thing is happening, which is not noticed by the uh, uh, common, uh, co common uh, observers. The big story playing out as to how can retail grow when and how can retail quality be good when the uh, there is you know some slowdown in the economy how is it happening why is it not showing in the books the key reason is there is a significant formalization happening so we don't have to dilute credit standards to grow because people who are not who are not borrowing for formal sector like the example you pointed out are now borrowing for formal sector so that is a very big factor and that is why you can grow the book without diluting the standards. You know, we are also having this discussion at a time when the budget is, uh, you know, about to be uh, released by a finance minister. Uh, we all know that they have been having a lot of consultation from industry leaders. Uh, I believe you were also invited for the prime minister consultation. Uh, what, did you manage to give some suggestions there? Um, uh, you know, it's true that I got an uh, invitation to go there, but it's so unfortunate that I was in London for the date when I happened to get that invite. It's one of my biggest regrets that I couldn't go. Uh, but I just uh, want to say uh, a few things which I've been saying publicly uh, as my wish list. Uh, one is uh, I think that uh, uh, I, I believe the small enterprises uh, are having to pay the same tax rate as the large corporates do. They all pay, first they were paying 30%, now it's 25, which is great. Uh, but, but I would actually say that if the corporate structure could be a tiered uh, structure, which is a progressive tax code, where it can charge small corporates just 5% tax and on a progressive basis increase it, uh, you know, that would be a very, well, I've been wishing for it for a long time. Uh, the second thing is that in the current environment, uh, definitely we need to give a big boost to the economy uh, in terms of uh, including in increasing consumption spending. Uh, and therefore, all the tax changes and all the stuff for personal income tax is important. And I think most of all of these, what I am looking forward to is really big ticket reforms, bold decisions on divestments, privatization. It's one of those moments you can just do it. So just to sum up our, our interaction, you are saying that uh, the bulk of the stress on your wholesale book is now ebbing off. Is recognized. Is recognized. But you don't expect incremental 
a need for incremental provisioning from not here Not an on. incremental provision in any significant way. I mean, not like the, I'm not going to post a thousand sure, plus sure. loss next quarter. Sure. If you have those kind of concerns, let me just say I'm putting it to rest. Those big issues are behind us. These are marginal issues that like any operating business will get. The core story is pre-operating profit at 680 crores was, is up over you know, two and a half times over last year. I think that's a big jump. And even if our normalized provisions are something like about, let me say, 400 odd crores, number. yeah, like retail itself, probably anywhere between, uh, you know, uh, 350 to 400 crores, maybe a, maybe 150 or 80 crores of corporate side, you know, that order of magnitude we can of course expect. Uh, but I can tell you, no blowout item is coming after this now. And your retail end of the book, of course, is growing very healthy. The retail book is are growing is well, and margins, margins are, are good, and asset quality is good. I am just taking this opportunity of telling all the investors, I understand uh, your, uh, the, 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 concern. the concern you have and I also understand the pain you feel because uh, you, you're saying, when is the story ending? I understand the concern. Uh, I am just assuring you we're building a great, like a wonderful bank at the core. We feel it, our employees are feeling it, we know what we're building. Uh, you know, it's like playing like Rahul Dravid innings. I want to play st safe and stable for, and build a solid foundation. Once it's built, you will see the quality of the product coming out. So uh, you're holding on to the targets and the ROA, RE targets which you've set? You know, we set five-year targets for CASA at 30%. Uh, Let me tell you, we're running far ahead of it. We could probably be 50% plus or more than that. Uh, retailization is coming wonderfully. Net interest margins, we got it for 5.5%. We will definitely get there. Uh, you can take it, all the guidance we've given, uh, give or take, We'll be there. So one line which you actually mentioned in your annual report is that we are going to build world's best bank. So that intrigued me a lot in asking you that when you say world's best bank, what are the ingredients you're talking about and what will it take for a bank of this size right now with this kind of resources and this environment we are operating in to put in place so that one can have an institution which people look up to? First of all, environment according to me is fantastic. We should not get worried about these recent stories. People talk about a slowdown. It's really fantastic. We see the India story for the next 15, 20, 30 years. It's really very good uh, as the underlying drivers like demographics and all that, demographics, GDP and income and all that. The second thing is that when we say a really fantastic bank we want to build, uh, it's not just building great systems because technology is there and we will we will build fantastic systems, we will throw resources after it. But we want to be known and we want to be genuinely customer friendly to the highest order possible. And it takes really something. I'll give you an example. Even when we take, you know, when we provide slabs above which we pay 7%, we pay 7% from the first rupee, not on an incremental basis on the slab. These are small ways of telling the customer that we really mean you first and we don't want to do any fine print and where we make an error we will apologize we will fix it but we will genuinely go for broke for building a world's best bank so you are a marathoner and you think that uh, at uh, idfc first bank you have a marathon task at hand and you should not be looking at only 100 meter 200 meter sprints when you are operating on a quarterly basis is it not absolutely i really like i said it's, uh, I, I i want to think long i really don't want to play premeditated shots out here by defining next quarter what profit should be. You know, I really don't want to go that way. There is social media already speculating what the next quarter's profit will be. I want to play to the merit of that ball. If that quarter is difficult, if that quarter if we have a problem, we'll say it. If that quarter we get a bonanza, we will say it. I just want to be truthful to the shareholders, to investors, to everybody, and truly build a wonderful bank. You watch the story after five years, you will rub your eyes about what bank is getting built here. All right, uh, Mr. Vedanathan, we uh, wish you all the best to achieve that. Thanks very much for your time and good luck going forward. Thank you very much.